Welcome to Summit TV. No matter where you are today, we believe that you'll encounter God's peace and joy during today's service. We know church seems different, but it can feel the same. If you haven't already, check out our Summit Church DC YouTube channel and make sure to hit that red subscribe button to stay updated throughout the week. Enjoy the service. TV and thanks for watching. Today is going to be a powerful day and we are so excited that we get to connect with you. We have a dedicated team that will be interacting with you live throughout the service, so don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Now, as always, we're going to start things off with worship, so we're asking that you truly engage with us to help us to create an atmosphere of worship right where you are. We know things seem a little bit different, but they can be the same, so here we go. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love 
走。
text the number at the bottom of your screen. Our prayer team is ready to pray with you as we continue to worship. is Alan and this broadcast and all we do for our community and around the world would not be possible without your giving. While we're not meeting in person, your online giving is appreciated more than ever. When you give, you empower Summit to continue to impact our community, our nation, and the world, so thank you. There are multiple ways for you to give. You can give online by clicking the link in the description box or via text using the information found on your screen. Text the amount you would like to give in the keyword summit to the number 45777. If Summit Church is your home, 
We're asking that you continue to give just like when we gather together. Whether it's online, text, or check in the mail, let's do this right now together. Father, I thank you for every person with a heart to give today. We thank you for your faithfulness in our lives, and we want to be faithful with what you have given us. We know that out of our giving, we make a difference in our community and our world. Thank you for using our resources to impact others with the love of God. This is why today I can give cheerfully because I'm making a difference and you promised the giver that you would always supply our every need. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, the church worldwide celebrates the day of Pentecost. And in a few moments, Pastor Eddie will be sharing a message about this powerful topic. Now, let's check out the weekend update and see what's happening here at Summit. everyone, my name is Melissa and I serve as the starting point coordinator and the young adults pastor. One thing we always look forward to at our in-person gatherings was meeting our first time guests. If you've never joined us in person, but you're here with us for the first time online, welcome. We would love to connect with you. Just text the phrase Summit Connect to 94000 or click the connection card link in the description box and take a moment to fill it out. We're here to answer your questions in real time and offer more information about Summit Church. You may be asking yourself, how can I get connected to Summit while church is meeting virtually? Starting Point is your answer. This four-step system introduces you to what Summit believes in and allows you to join teams where you can be a part of what's happening right here. The four steps can be completed in any order and they're offered virtually using Zoom. Register for today's steps by emailing me at melissa at summitchurchdc.com. Summit small groups are the perfect way to stay connected to others during this time. Groups are meeting across the DMV virtually using social media, Zoom, and Google Hangouts to support one another and grow together in a community. Browse and register for your favorite group online at summitchurchdc.com. We cannot wait to honor all of the amazing fathers and 2020 graduates out there. If you're a high school or college graduate, we want to recognize you. Tomorrow is the last day to register online to add your name to the list. Parents, we're so pumped for the brand new Kids Life TV series on the Fruit of the Spirit. Episode 11 premieres today on YouTube and Facebook following this service. You can rewatch episodes anytime throughout the week online. Every single night, our teens meet up on Instagram for Summit Youth Live. These fun services include live worship, messages, question and answer sessions, giveaways, and more surprises each week. If you're a student, we'll catch you on the story tonight at 6 p.m. This week, we're gathering on Summit TV for Worship Wednesday. We invite you to enjoy a night of passionate worship music and a message made just for you. Who else needs to watch along? Shoot them a text and invite them to join you. Serving others is at the core of everything we do at Summit Church. Summit offers new serve opportunities each week that you can be a part of. This month, the American Red Cross visited Summit Church for a blood drive. Our Summit community was honored to be a part of this exciting opportunity to make a major difference. If you want to be a part of an upcoming project, shoot us a text or an email and our team will contact you. Our mission is to create a life-giving community of changed lives through the love of God and faith in Jesus Christ. The Summit team is committed to helping you to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. Let us know how we can help you in your relationship with God by messaging us or shoot us an email at info at summitchurchdc.com. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Summit TV. No matter where you are, thank you so much for tuning in today. If this is your first time, some experience, I want to welcome you and thank you for spending part of your Sunday with us. My name is Eddie Trayers, and I am the lead pastor here at Summit, and I want you to know that on behalf of my staff that are here every day, and of course, the awesome dream team who come in and serve to make this broadcast possible, we are totally committed to staying connected with you. 
And we thank God, of course, for these cameras and all the technology available to us through the internet to be able to do just that. And now, as always, it's your turn to connect with us. So whatever platform you're using today, take a few minutes and let us know that you're watching during the broadcast. Interact with us and use the comment box, message us, you know the drill. Go ahead, get your your device out and let us know where you're watching from. We love your pictures, we love your comments, we love to know about your Summit TV experience, and of course, we have a team standing by that's ready to interact with you, and thank you for viewing with us. Also, the only way we're growing the church right now is by you hitting that share button and being an inviter. So tag your friends, start a watch party, invite people to join in today. You know, we're reaching more people than ever. It's been an amazing process and journey since we've begun 100% digital. And that's because you have used the power of the share button to welcome others to watch Summit TV. And so as we get ready to go into the message today, I just want to kind of remind everybody of what our series was last week that we wrapped up and that was built to last. And I'm going to try to dovetail what we talked about last week into a little mini series that I'm beginning this week titled Holy Spirit. You know, many people are familiar with the phrase that describes the breakdown of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So today, we're going to look into what most people think is the most mysterious figure in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. At least to those who may not know who he is or what his role is in the Trinity. We're going to begin in the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1 and verse 1. Now, obviously, we're going to run through a few verses, so hang with me here. My name is Peter, and I'm a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm writing this letter to you whose experience with God is as life-changing as ours. I don't know about you, but I have had a major life change because of Jesus, all because of God's intervention for us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at this next part, grace and peace to you many times over, how is it? As you deepen in your experience with God and Jesus. Everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one who invited us to God. The way that we receive that grace and peace, the way that we move on into the next thing is we have to get to know the one who invited us to God. Of course, his name is Jesus. The best invitation we ever received. We were also given amazing promises to pass on to you, your tickets to participation in the life of God after you turned your back on the world corrupted by lust. Notice what we've done. We've received the grace of God. We've turned our back, not on people, but on the world system. And we may have to turn our back on some people, but we're not turning our back on humanity because we are the light of the world. So don't lose one minute building on what you've been given complementing your basic faith by adding. Now, I read all of that to get to this point. Complementing your basic faith by adding good character, spiritual understanding. I want you to pay attention to that one. Alert discipline, passionate patience, reverent wonder, warm friendliness, and generous love. Each dimension fitting into and developing, look what it says, the other's. With these qualities, active and growing in your life. Notice again, what's happening in our life. We, we are having them active. They're growing. This is how we grow spiritually. No grass will grow under your feet. No day will pass without its reward as you mature in your experience of our master, Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to see this one last scripture. Without these qualities, you can't see what's right before you oblivious that your old sinful life has been wiped off the books. Isn't that powerful? So one more time, 
before we go into any more scripture, I want you to remember what we just said that we're adding to, and we're going to do that by understand, having some spiritual understanding. Remember, I told you to remember that one. We're going to re- have some more spiritual understanding. But before we do, why don't you come with me one more time over to my little workshop for a visual demonstration? So as we come into our workshop last week, we built this house and we talked about our framing. And our framing, of course, was our words and how we built up. But I wanted to one more time make sure that we understood exactly how this ties into everything else. So real quickly, I've got some bags of dirt here. And if you remember, the Bible talks about the soil of our life being the heart. And so as I put this soil down, and this is, this is topsoil... And this is potting mix. Now I realize this is not quite what you would build a house on, but I'm trying to use a demonstration. You might be able to see the difference in the color of that dirt. One's really dark. One's a little lighter brown. So as I take this dirt and I mix it up, I'm creating what my heart would be made of. The soil that I'm going to put my foundation on top of. Remember, we talked about the different types of soil. I've just mixed two soils together, so now I've got this spread out. This is the soil of my heart, just like the earth. Real quickly, looks like I'm making a garden is what it looks like. So the Bible tells us that once our heart is right and our soil is good, the Bible says we set a foundation. So now we put down the foundation of our life. And the foundation of our life is the Word of God, the things that are said by the Word of God. We fill our mouth with the Word of God. And as we do, we get a firm foundation on top of the soil of our life. So now we're going to bring, I'm going to get some helpers in here. These guys are amazing because they can pick up a whole house. So let's see how this works out, guys. Ready when you are. Thank you, gentlemen. Everybody give our team a big round of applause. What a great job they did. So what have we done? The soil of our heart, the concrete, the foundation, and our house is sitting on top of it. So what happens next? What now happens? The only way we finish this house is by what we put inside of it. Now we begin to work on the interior of our home. So let's go back over to the message. So now that we have tied together last week's message with this week's message by pointing out exactly how we uh, fill our house. You know, the Bible says that God sent the Holy Spirit to fill us. We've got our groundwork all done. Everything that we can't see, we've got our framing up. The words that people hear from us, the lifestyle they see, we've changed. They literally can see a difference in our life. Now the Holy Spirit wants to come and fill all those spaces. He wants to come and fill all the voids on the inside of us, which leads me to my first point, which is pointing to the future. When we look at Jesus and we realize who he was, you know what we begin to find out? When we begin to focus on what Jesus said, we see that one of his teaching tactics was to point to the future. Jesus would talk about the past Jesus would talk about the present, who he was in the present, but one of the tactics that he would use occasionally was to point to the future. He pointed to the future to prove who he was. He made predictions or prophecies, and he would speak those out so that when they took place down the road, people would know that he was God. Let's look at one of these over in John chapter 2 and verse 18 through 22. The Pharisees asked him this question, What credentials can you present to justify your actions? 
Those credentials that they were looking for was because he came into the house of God, the church or the temple, and he saw that they were no longer using the house of God, his father's house, the way that it was intended to be used for. And it was supposed to be used for worship and prayer. It was supposed to be used for scripture reading. It was supposed to be used for spiritual things. But they had actually turned it into kind of a retail store where they were buying and selling. And it very much upset Jesus. And he came in and began to kick people out of the house. So when they said, what are your credentials to do that? Jesus said this. He said, tear down this temple, and in three days, I will put it back together again. And they were like, what? It took 46 years to build this temple. Think about that, 46 years. That's, that's half a lifetime. And you're going to rebuild it in three days? But Jesus was talking about his body as the temple. Later, after his death on the cross and the resurrection from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this. They put two and two together and believed both what was written in Scripture and what Jesus had said. This is exactly what God wants us to do. He wants us to put two and two together. He wants us to see what he says, and he wants us to point at what's happening in our life. He, he says what's coming, and when it happens, we can say, look what God's doing. And this message, I'm wanting us to put two and two together, built to last, and then filling that home with the Holy Spirit. So we're, we're talking about Jesus predicting or pointing to the future. Let's look at another instance where he predicted. Jesus is talking about Judas. You remember Judas? He was the one who betrayed him. And look what he says. He says, the one who's eating supper with me will betray me. And this will soon come true. I'm telling you now so that when it happens, you will believe on me. Again, he's pointing to the future. He's saying, I'm God. I know what's going to happen. And so I'm pointing to the future. And I just want to clarify something. The reason why he knew what was going to happen was because the Holy Spirit revealed it to him. He wasn't all knowing like the heavenly father when he was in his body. He was just as much a man as he was God. But the way that he knew things is the Holy Spirit would reveal things to him. He operated that way because he was setting an example for you and me to operate in the same way. The Holy Spirit fills us, and the Bible says that we'll know things because the Holy Spirit communicates with us. And so he said this, when it happens, I want you to remember what I said. Let's look at another instance which ties together our subject today. John chapter 7 and verse 37, it says, On the last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, I, I kind of like that, Whoever is thirsty should come to me, and whoever believes in me should drink. As the scripture says, streams of life-giving water will, speaking to the future, pour out from their heart. Jesus said this about the Holy Spirit, which those who believed in him were going to receive. So this was speaking to the future. So if we look at the last part, it says at that time, the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been raised to glory. So the Spirit hadn't come in that fashion yet, but Jesus was pointing to the future. And so we are talking about the Holy Spirit. So our first point is, the Holy Spirit, Jesus was pointing to the future. Our second point is, it's already happened. It's no longer a future event. It's a present day event. And so on this day, on the church calendar, this is a very special day today. And if you were here in church and you were sitting here and we had multiple service, all these people would coming in and we would be celebrating on this Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. This is a, a Jewish festival, and this is Jesus pointing to the future. He's pointing to this passage in the future where Jesus said those who believed on him were going to receive the Holy Spirit. We're living in that day right now because it was on this day that the Jewish calendar 2,000 years ago is when Jesus said that it would happen 
And it did happen. We've already seen that the Holy Spirit has come, and we're going to look at that in Scripture. Now, William Blake wrote a poem about Pentecost, and part of that poem says this, Unless the eye catch fire, God will not be seen. Unless the ear catch fire, God will not be heard. Unless the tongue catch fire, God will not be named. Unless the heart catch fire, God will not be loved. Unless the mind catch fire, God will not be known. You see, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. Why? Because our heart is right. Because our foundation is strong. Because the building is coming up and we're saying what the Word says. Now we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we want God to be known. You know, I I heard about this local area father who took his five-year-old son, David, to a couple Washington national baseball games. And of course, before every game, what do we sing? The American Star-Spangled Banner. And following that Sunday, they were in church, and, and David and both his dad were sitting there, and it happened to be the Sunday before the 4th of July. And one of the songs that was sung that day was, of course, the Star Spangled Banner. And after everyone had sang with great enthusiasm, they sat down, and little David stood up on the pew, and he shouted, play ball! Now, why would I use that as an example? First of all, I'd love to see that happen in church. That would be awesome. But you see, on the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost is exactly when God said play ball. It was the day the church was given birth to. It was the day that Jesus had foretold and he talked about the church, that in the future, the church, he predicted the church. And on the day of Pentecost is when the church was birthed. And that was the day God said, play ball. We can see this over in the book of Acts in chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, when the feast of Pentecost came. Let's just take a minute and clarify the fact that Pentecost is a feast. It's a day. It is not a religion. It's not a tradition. It's simply something that was uh, celebrated by the Jews. They were all together in one place without warning, and there was a sound as a strong wind, a gale force No one could tell where it came from, and it filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, remember we just said, unless the mind catch fire, unless the ear catch fire, unless the tongue catch fire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them to speak. You know, we need to remember that the Holy Spirit is here right now. Jesus predicted this. And then 50 days later, from the time that he left to that day, 50 days later, 50 is the word Pentecost, that number. And on that day, 50 days later, when we celebrated Easter, the resurrection from the dead, Pentecost came just like Jesus said that it would. I want you to see this statement. You need to remember what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit that those who believed in him were going to receive the Holy Spirit and streams of life-giving water would pour out from their heart. This is exactly what we see. This is exactly what happened as Jesus said it would. It's why when the Holy Spirit came, they began to speak out in these languages. God supernaturally filled them and they began to speak out in languages that they had never learned. The Bible says, as the Spirit filled their mouths, they began to speak. And Peter, who was one of Jesus' closest friends, told everyone who was there He pointed something out. And I want you to see this over in the book of Acts again, chapter 2. We were were over there in the book of Acts. Now we're going one more chapter over at the end there. Peter said to them, change your hearts and lives and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, a lot of these people had already been baptized in water. They'd been baptized for the forgiveness of sins washing of the water, but Jesus hadn't died yet. So they weren't baptized in Christ. And see, we believe in three baptisms. We believe in the baptism in Christ, the baptism in water, and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And he is telling them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then God will forgive your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy 
Spirit. It's an amazing thing to think that we can receive that gift today. This promise is for you. It's also for your children and for the people who are far away. And like I said, it's for us today. And it's for everyone. It wasn't just for that one moment. Some people say it was just for that one moment or it was just to give birth to the church. It was just to get the church started. But that's not what the scripture says. Peter specifically told us that the promise is for your children. Another translation says for your children's children and for people who are far away. Well, that was in Israel. We're far away from Israel and it is for everyone. You know what we said? It's already happened. This has already taken place. Millions of people who have surrendered their lives to God have found that God keeps his promises. When Jesus pointed the future, he said that the Holy Spirit was coming. On this day, the Holy Spirit came. And we have found today that God keeps his promises. You remember what we read over in 2 Peter chapter 1, 5? Complimenting your basic faith by adding spiritual understanding. You see, when we add spiritual understanding, what we're doing is we're adding to our basic faith the element of spiritual understanding. It enables us to build on what we have already been given. When we get spiritual understanding, what we have built over here on the side When we've got ourselves built up, what does it do? It helps us to build on what we've already been given. And placing our faith in God, we begin a spiritual journey. We begin this journey to understanding what our lives were originally designed for. You have an original design. And the truth is, we usually get off the road of our original design. You know, I've been married 31 years And my wife has driven some type of four-door sedan the entire time that we have been married. Uh, We had a two-door just for a short time when we were first married, but then we had children, and we've had four doors ever since. And for the majority of the time, I've driven a four-wheel drive truck. And of course, we all know what the best truck is, and that's Ford. And anybody who knows that the F-Series trucks are the best, I realize I'm starting a little trouble, but there's a little sales pitch for Ford. (laughs) If I used my wife's car in the way that I used my truck, it would destroy her car in a very short time. Why? Because it was not designed to be used like a truck. And in the same way, when we live our lives without God and a lack of spiritual understanding, we miss out on what we were designed for we miss out on what we were designed for. And what do we do? We end up destroying our own lives. My wife's car cannot go where my truck goes. And when my truck goes, I don't want to take my wife's car. My life is not designed for some things. And so what do I do? I get built to last. I work on all those elements we've already talked about, but I don't want to leave my house empty. I'm going to fill it with the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he helps me to become exactly what you and I were designed to live out, the promise of God that he gave us. Jesus spoke to the future, and it happened just like he said it would. He said if we would believe on him and turn our back on a worldly lifestyle and study to gain spiritual understanding, attend church and worship, that we would add to our buildings and our lives the promises of God. Let's look over here in John chapter 16. It says, there is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't understand it now. I think that would be the worst statement that I could ever hear come from the lips of Jesus, that he wants to tell me something, but I'm not mature enough to receive it. But look what he says. When the Holy Spirit, who is truth, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. So there are some things that God wants to tell us. After we get our heart settled, we get our foundation and our building up, and we need to receive some things, the Holy Spirit helps us to be able to understand the things that we can't understand without the Holy Spirit. Look over here in another passage. 
In John chapter 16, verse 12, it says, For he will not be presenting his own ideas, but will be passing on to you what he has already heard. He will tell you about the future. You see, the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he fills us, but then he begins to give us the information that we need to live out our lives full of destiny. Thank God for the moment that you realized that there was a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank God for the moment that you realized that Jesus gave his life and you were able to receive him and ask him to forgive you of your sins and you welcomed him into your heart and all of a sudden you began to read the word of God. Some, some old things began to change. You were speaking differently as you were building your life. But God is saying, listen, I want to fill your life with the Holy Spirit. So point number one, he pointed to the future and it came to pass. Point number two, it's already happened. We're living in that moment. Point number three, why wait? Why wait any longer? This is your moment. Do you remember where we started out in Second Peter? Look what it says. So don't lose a minute building on what you've already been given. Don't lose a minute putting some things into your house. Don't lose a minute. We've, we've already built. We, we've worked so hard. This is the time to fill ourselves. Why are we talking about this? Because today is Pentecost Sunday. This is the day we celebrate that's shown over in Acts chapter 2 that we already read that the Holy Spirit came and filled the people which became the church. You know, today I want to challenge every one of you to get to know the Holy Spirit in a way you've never known him before. Get to know what his role is in your life. So many people do not know who the Holy Spirit is, and that's nothing new. The Apostle Paul, he was someone who traveled all over, and he made some contact with people. And I want to look at this over in Acts chapter 19, and we're going to read a few verses here. It says, Paul the Apostle, again traveling, was visiting the city of Ephesus, and he came across some other followers of Jesus. I love that. Followers of Jesus were spreading all over the Middle East. And he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, we've never even heard of a Holy Spirit. There are a lot of people that have never even know who the Holy Spirit is. And it just wouldn't do justice that on uh, Pentecost Sunday, when on the, on the church calendar, we're celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit that was promised by Jesus, that we wouldn't take some time to explain to you who he is. We didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. You know, if you've been anywhere near a church, anywhere near maybe a Christian, you have most likely heard of the Holy Spirit. If that doesn't mean you know who the Holy Spirit is. And so Paul went on to ask them a question. Paul asked them, so what kind of baptism did you have? They said it was the baptism that John taught. Look what he says. Well, Paul said, John told the people to be baptized to show that they wanted to change their lives. This was the baptism of forgiveness, which we just said earlier. They came down for the washing of their sins. And it says to show that they wanted to change their lives. He told the people to believe in the one who would come after him. And that one was Jesus. So Jesus hadn't come yet. So when we see John the Baptist baptizing people, he wasn't baptizing them like we do today. He was baptizing them, getting them ready for Jesus. It says, when these followers heard this, they did not want to wait another minute. Remember what we read over there in Second Peter, don't waste any time. So they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So now they've received Jesus Christ, the first baptism. They were baptized in water. And then we talk about the third baptism. Then Paul laid hands on them and they received and the Holy Spirit came on them and began to speak in different languages. So there we are again. We see over in the beginning of the book of Acts that the Holy Spirit came and he came in with fire and he came in with wind. 
and they began to speak in other languages. We see Paul find some believers and he says, hey, what's going on with you guys? Have you been, did you receive the Holy Spirit? We don't even know there's a Holy Spirit. He said, well, wait a minute. How have you, what's your walk right now? How have you been baptized? Well, we were baptized just in John's baptism. Well, Well, you need baptism in water, but you need baptism in Christ. And you also need the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You know, I started today talking about the most mysterious part of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And when you hear that they began to speak in different languages, it can sound so mysterious. And I want to say to you that it is not. It is simply God moving on people. You know, my wife and myself and our entire summit team were all spirit-filled believers with our own prayer languages that Jesus has given us. You know, Jesus pointed out that when we received the Holy Spirit, that he would empower us to live strong. I don't think that's any more mysterious than God sending his son through a virgin. I don't think it's any more mysterious than him living 33 years without one sin in his life. I don't think it's any more mysterious than him dying on a cross for my sin and suffering in hell for you and for me. I don't think it's any more mysterious than him coming back to life to forgive me of all of my sin. You know, we, we've looked at the fact that Jesus always pointed to the future. We live in that day right now. It's happening right now. Jesus was pointing to our day. He was pointing to our day as the one we needed help and power to live out this Christian life. Jesus did not leave us powerless. He left us powerful. And so as we talk about Pentecost Sunday, I'm just taking this time to reintroduce this subject or maybe for the first time introduce it to some people who have heard the phrase Father, Son, and Holy Spirit but had no idea really the role of the Holy Spirit. I am just scratching the surface, just beginning. We will continue on this subject next week. But it's very important for you to know that once you receive Christ, you need to be empowered to live that out. Look over here. In the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, it says Jesus was talking to his disciples just before he was raised up the second time. He had died on the cross. He rose from the dead. The Bible says he stayed with them 40 days, and he was seen by over 400 people that he was alive. But then he went up into the clouds, and just before he did, he said, the Holy Spirit will come on you and give you power, and you will be my witnesses. You will tell people everywhere about me. This is one of the roles of the Holy Spirit in our life, to empower us. This word power, I want you to see this. The word power is the Greek word dunamis. This is where we get our English word dynamite. So when Jesus said that that we would receive power, he wasn't talking about just a, a little oomph. He wasn't talking about just a little help. He was literally used the word dunamis. He said, you shall receive dunamis. That was the word he used, dynamite. Something so powerful, it changes the landscape. Jesus pointed to the future. And he said, in addition, remember we're talking about addition, to your believing in me, I will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Why? So that you can live your life out full of power. Power to overcome temptation. Power to tell others about the saving grace and mercy that you have received. Look at this statement. God has a stick of dynamite for you to add to your faith. Boom! Mic drop. God wants to give you dunamis power. He, he, he's already given you the baptism in Christ. You're forgiven. He's already given you baptism in water, but he wants to add to that. Remember, we're filling our house now with the power of the Holy Spirit. And he described that power just like when we see a st- stick of dynamite go off and blow a hole in the side of a mountain. Jay Bryce made this statement. Before Pentecost, the struggle was hopeless. After Pentecost, they overcame. The Spirit made slaves into sovereigns. 
victims into victors and cowards into conquerors. That's exactly what God wants to do for you. And I can tell you that I once was a slave, I once was a victim, and I once was a coward. But Jesus has turned me into a sovereign and a, and a victor, and he's made me into a conqueror. It wasn't just because I asked him to forgive me of my sin. That just made me justified. That made me ready for heaven. That gave me an encouragement that God loved me no matter what. But then he said, I want to give you the power to live it out. What's a car? It doesn't matter how nice the interior is or how nice the paint job and the tires and the wheels are unless it has an engine. The Holy Spirit is the engine to our life so that we can be a witness to other people. I want, I want you to know this. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Just a couple weeks ago on a Wednesday night, my wife and I taught on the Holy Spirit together on prayer encounter night. You could go back and to the archive and you can see what we said about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has changed my life. See, the forgiveness that Jesus gave me put me in a position for the Holy Spirit to come and to fill me and to change my life. I believe God wants to do the same thing for you. I certainly hope that this message today on Pentecost Sunday has helped you to see the Holy Spirit maybe in a new light or in a fresh way. I'm now going to invite the team to come back and they're going to sing uh, really one of my favorite songs from long ago. What a friend we have in Jesus. How true it is when that song was written, it was actually written as a poem and then turned into a song later. So would you open up your heart right now and, and, and get ready to worship. Just close your eyes and let the team minister to you. What a friend we have in Jesus.
written in 1855 by Joseph Scraven. What a friend we have in Jesus. You know, my mom taught me that song when I was just a little guy, and every time I hear it, I think about her. And you know, she was one who taught me that Jesus truly was my friend. And as we have talked today and we've shared about the power of the Holy Spirit and how that Jesus promised that he wasn't going to leave us alone, that when he left, he was going to send the Holy Spirit. And I can tell you that that friendship that I have with God is through the Holy Spirit. And there are some of you out there that maybe you've never known what it's like to have friendship with God, to be in a position to feel that you're close to God. And I want you to know that right now He wants to be close to you. We have all experienced over the last few months what it means to be a little isolated and maybe even feel completely alone. But God doesn't want you to feel that way. When we get alone, a lot of times we get into our thoughts and our thoughts can con condemn us and make us feel less than we should feel. God wants to remove that condemnation from every human being, and that's through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're listening to me today and you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I would like to give you an opportunity to do that right now. I love to tell people it doesn't matter where you've been, it doesn't matter what you have done, and it doesn't matter how many times you have done it or who you did it with. God loves you and He has a plan for your life. I believe every word of that. And some people will respond, you don't realize what I've done and how messed up I am. I might look fine on the outside, but you don't know where I've been or what I've done. But I can tell you this, God likes to take those situations and put them back together better than they were before they were messed up. He'll do that for you right now through a simple decision of you saying, Jesus, I give you control of my life. If you would do that right now, you'd begin a brand new moment and you too would be able to say, what a friend, what a savior I have personally in Jesus. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pray a prayer and I'm going to invite anyone who's listening who has never invited Christ into their life to do that right now. Would you repeat this prayer after me? Just bow your head and close your eyes and say these words. Heavenly Father, I realize that I have a need for a Savior. And I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe He was born of a virgin and that He lived a sinless life. And in my place, He died on a sinner's cross. He was also buried in a sinner's tomb. But three days later, I believe He rose from the dead. And when He did, it was with my new life, with my forgiveness. And so right now, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my past, to wash me clean with your precious blood. I thank you now for coming into my heart, and I give you total control. And now I say this about myself. I am forgiven. I'm washed. I'm saved. And I'm ready for heaven. And from this day forward, I will never, ever be the same. In Jesus' name, would everybody say it together with me? Amen. We thank God for the decision that you've made. I want you to know that no matter where you are, no matter what position you're in, God heard you. And not only did he hear you, but he's done exactly what you've asked. He has set you free. What we'd like to do is help you to take the next steps. A lot of times people make a decision and they don't know what to do next. But if you would pull out a device and you would text us at Summit Saved at 94000, that's Summit Saved 94000, there's a team standing by that would love to talk with you, help you to decide how it is you're going to take your next steps. We want to be here for you and with you. 
from today forward. You know, we have been meeting socially separated. We've only been meeting through the camera. But soon and very soon, we will be meeting right back here in this facility. People will be filling chairs up back again. We are working on those plans. We know that the Commonwealth of Virginia has now allowed the DMV area to go into phase one, which is just a soft opening of the economy, but also will allow us to begin to plan to bring people back into the building. We will not be able to go to full capacity obviously we're looking at all of those measures and we will be letting you know very soon how we're going to reopen the doors we're looking forward to that time but in the meantime we are thankful that we've been able to reach out and connect with you thank you for continuing to connect with us god bless you we'll see you really really soon today's broadcast could not happen without your generosity your financial support is more important than ever in helping us continue to make a difference at Summit Church. If you'd like to support Summit by giving, click the Give link in our live stream description box. Up next is Kids Life TV, and starting point is meeting this afternoon at 1.15 p.m.